welcome to Currency Cast. Merck and Hermes, can we reverse engineer the foreign exchange management strategies of these two European and very successful companies with a global footprint? The answer is yes, but it's going to require a good dose of German discipline and French savoir-faire. Welcome to Currency Cast. My name is Augustine McKinley, I'm the senior financial writer at Cantox and your host. In this episode, we untangle the foreign exchange risk management strategies at Merck, the well-known pharmaceutical company, and Hermes, one of the leading firms in the high-end luxury sector. A quick glance at the market capitalization of Merck and Hermes is enough to highlight their success. As of early July 2024, the market capitalization of Merck, not to be confused with Merck & Company, the American firm, stands at about $66 billion. And at $236 billion, the market capitalization of Hermes puts it in position 45 in a global ranking of the most valuable companies according to their market capitalization. Now, needless to say, the success of both firms depends in, on, in a large measure on the talented team of scientists at Merck and on the equally talented group of designers, artists, and craftspeople over at Hermes. So, at first sight, it could be puzzling to see why we would discuss two companies with, uh, that operate in such different sectors. But there is a common theme. In both cases, the finance team, thanks to its foreign exchange risk management, has made an important contribution to the success of the companies. And let's keep in mind, these are not stories with a beginning, a middle, and an end. On the contrary, these are ongoing, open-ended situations from which we can learn a lot and they can learn a lot. One reason we decided to focus on Merck is the availability of information regarding its foreign exchange risk management program. As we can see from the recently published Management of Financial Risk Guidelines, Merck applies the full gamut of ethics uh, management programs. So let me highlight the following five points. Number one, uh, systematic hedging. Uh, speculation is strictly prohibited, and there is a separation of powers of sorts going on, as the functions of trading, settlement, and control are strictly separated from each other. Number two, balance sheet hedging. All FX-denominated accounts receivable and payables are hedged in full, and the company does that to remove the accounting impact of foreign exchange gains and losses from the PL. Number three, cash flow hedging programs. There is a layered hedging program in place as the company hedges 12, mo 12 months in advance forecasted uh, foreign exchange denominated revenues and expenditures. It starts at a hedge ratio of 25%, and the program ends at a hedge ratio between 40% and 90%. Number five, uh, firm commitments. All those firm sales orders uh, or for purchases or sales are also hedged in full. And we'll see that might play out in combination with the previous point. Finally, credit risk management. The company plays, pays special attention to uh, reducing the credit risk in accounts receivable. As we know at Cantox, Selling in the currency of your customers and taking ownership of the corresponding FX risk management process is a way to reduce the credit risk in your accounts receivable. Because we're not privy to any specific information regarding Merck's uh, foreign exchange hedging program, we can try and reverse engineer it with the available information. So here's a possibility. The, the, the finance team at Merck applies what we call at Cantox a combination of hedging programs, and it could work like this. First, a layered hedging program is in place, and starting 12 months in advance, layers of hedges are applied to forecasted revenues and expenditures. Then, a micro-hedging program for firm commitments, that is, firm sales or purchase orders, is added. And as soon as the corresponding accumulated firm commitments 
go beyond the established hedge ratio by the, uh, the latest hedging program, that second program takes over. And now hedges are done on the back of those firm sales orders. And as you will notice, this adds a, uh, um, an element of precision to the existing hedging program. Now, all that is required for the finance team to leverage all that information is to be able to, um, to obtain this information from the different systems, it's ERP or ERPs, TMS and others. And that could be achieved thanks to application programming interfaces connectivity. Before discussing Hermes, there is one last question about Merck. Why does the company provide investors with so much details about its foreign exchange hedging programs? I think there are three possible answers to that question. Number one, the, the management wants to convey a sense of discipline. By providing such detailed information, investors get the message that management is very serious regarding uh, the protection of the company's profit margins from currency risk. Number two, the optimal disclosure hypothesis. Providing too little information is surely a bad policy. But perhaps providing an excess of information could create confusion and make financial statements difficult to read. So presumably, according to that hypothesis, Merck is providing the optimal level of disclosure. Finally, a recent paper suggests another possibility. Management teams, and especially the finance team, when they disclose an enormous amount of information regarding, among others, the foreign exchange risk management programs, this is because they want to enhance the liquidity of the stock as an acquisition currency in the event of mergers and acquisitions. That is surely a very interesting hypothesis, although it doesn't seem to be the case at Merck because recent uh, purchases have all been conducted in cash. The French luxury designer and manufacturer Hermès is on a league of its own. The company has just announced that it had achieved a 42.1 annual operating profit margin in 2023. That's the highest in the company's history. That's quite an extraordinary achievement, and we can only say chapeau. But the intriguing part from the point of view of foreign exchange managers is the fact that Hermes has also announced that a, contribu a contribution to that operating profit margin was due to the currency hedging program applied by its finance team. So that is, again, another interesting statement. So let's try and reconstruct the uh, Hermes or reverse engineer Hermes foreign exchange hedging strategy. Now, unlike the case of Merck, there is relatively little information that is published by Hermes regarding its FX management policy. We know, however, that uh, we have information about what we call at Cantox the pricing parameters of the firm. More specifically, MS raised prices by an average of 7% during 2023, and price increases reached double digits in Japan. That's because the Japanese yen depreciated sharply against the, the euro in recent months. So what we have here is the fact that the company passes on to its customers the impact of what we call at Cantox the cliff, a sharp change in the exchange rate between uh, campaign or budget periods. And the company is right to do so because its cost base is mostly in euros as, as its highly skilled workforce is located around the region of Paris. Again, we're not private to any specific details regarding Hermes's foreign exchange hedging programs. We can only assume that the company may be applying what we call at Cantox a combination of hedging programs consisting of one, a static hedging program in which a worst case scenario FX rate used in pricing for each individual campaign or budget period is protected with the help of conditional stop loss orders. And then, a micro-hedging program is added to that existing static hedging program. Outperforming budgeted profit margins is made possible by 
Number one, forward points management. Today I'm wearing one of the two Hermes ties that I own. I wear it a lot less these days. Now, why do I mention this? It's because the silk is, uh, is imported from Brazil and Hermes can pick up some extra margin by hedging these purchases as the Brazilian real trades at a 5.6 annual discount to the euro. The same can be said for sales in Japan as the Japanese yen trades at a 3.6 annual forward premium to the euro. Number two, the FX markup. As the finance team calculates the worst case scenario that is going to defend during each individual campaign or budget period, it uses a less favorable foreign exchange rate than the one that prevails at the moment when it sets the budget. Number three, hedging firm commitments. As the finance, finance team hedges incoming firm sales and purchase orders, it does so at a more favorable rate than the worst case scenario rate used in pricing. Otherwise, stop loss orders would have been executed and there would be no exposure left to hedge. Number four, take profit orders. As the finance team sets the configuration of the hedging program, it can set profit taking orders alongside those stop loss orders to protect the worst case scenario uh, FX rate. And that allows the team to profit from favorable moves in currency markets, which likely happened in 2023 and in the first half of 2024. In our hypothetical reverse engineering of the foreign exchange risk management strategies of Merck and Hermes, we have assumed that in both cases, management uses a combination of hedging programs. As we saw earlier, this requires finance teams to be able to leverage all the information that sits in different company systems, ERP, TMS, and others. Technology is also required to perform the, the task of swap execution and to compile all the required information to perform hedge accounting, a task that both companies undertake. Now, this requires what we call at Cantox perfect end-to-end -end traceability, namely the fact that along the transaction journey from a, an entry to a position to a conditional order to a, an operation and then a payment or a series of payments in the event of swaps, each element has its own unique reference number. So once again, congratulations to the team of scientists at Merck and to the also very talented team of designers, artists, and craftspeople over at Hermes. They are surely the main culprits of the tremendous success of their companies. Let's keep in mind also that the finance team does play a role, especially in its capacity as foreign exchange risk managers. Cantox is hiring. Cantox has an ambitious growth plan and we're looking for top talent to join our team. In the coming 12 months, Cantox plans to hire more than 100 persons in different departments. Find out more on our LinkedIn page. <music>